Good morning everyone! Today I will take you along for another vlog of my life. It's a Monday, but in fact it's a natural holiday today in Sweden because it is the 1st of May, the International Workers' Day, so many of us are off from work today, so I figure why not take you along for a day. Right now it's about 9.30 in the morning, I have eaten breakfast and I am ready to start my day. So, well, let's go! All right, now we're off to the gym and of course I'm wearing all me made workout wear. On my legs there are the slow leggings and the custom print spoonflower fabric with a lot of mess inserts and stuff like that. And on my upper body I have a hoodie that the pattern I've drafted myself. And I have, um, as you can see, my custom cups with thumb holes. If you're interested in that, I've also done a video tutorial about that. You can check out. Links will be in the description section. And well, the fabric is from Stuff and Steel. It's just a regular cotton thing. So that's what I'm wearing to the gym today. And of course, underneath our top that I also drafted myself. But enough about the workout outfit. And let's talk about why I make waitering a priority when I exercise and that is because I've struggled a lot with repetitive strain injuries symptoms in the past because I worked in front of a computer for the last 20 plus years and I've found that a mix of physical therapy with traditional strength training exercise has been the most effective way to keep those nagging injuries in check. So that is why I always make weight training my number one priority when I'm planning my exercise week. I'm back from the gym and what I need to do right now is to take an outfit photo using my remote timer, my tripod and my camera. Yes, I have no one today to take any pictures and the reason why I'm taking an outfit photo is that I'm participating in Me May May and my pledge this year is to make sewing a priority in the month of May uh, I usually wear me make clothes pretty much every day, so that doesn't really feel like a big pledge for me, if you know what I mean. Uh, so what I'm trying to do right now is that I want to finish three garments during May and I want the outfit photo to make a post on Instagram to show what I wear today. So obviously I'm going to take a photo of the gym outfit that I'm wearing. Uh, well, uh, so I'm just going out now and take that photo by myself and well, hopefully it will turn out alright. The shooting is done and I figured that I managed to take a couple of pictures that I really like and what I'm doing right now is transfer them from the camera to the iPhone using a Wi-Fi system. And there are lots of ways to do that. Most cameras today are able to connect through Wi-Fi and if you have an old camera you can also use the SD card if you can you can buy SD cards, memory cards that has a Wi-Fi on it and that's what I'm using here. So I just transfer it to the cell phone now we're in my living room and what I need to do right now is to finish something that I started last night but was just too tired to finish so I need to do that right now so let's take a look. So this is the current state of the living room floor. What I am doing is that I am purging slash sorting out all my patterns. I do have them separated by in an alphabetic order, so I had two boxes and well there are a lot of patterns and I've actually started to purge these and I don't know about that. this is something I struggle with. Look at this. I mean seriously. <laughs> Will I ever be able to use this pattern again when it looks like this? I don't know. Do you iron your tissue paper? I haven't tried that one but that, that should be an option because this is not a pretty sight, right? <laughs> And what sort of patterns do I have? Well, I have quite a few vintage patterns. I do collect them. And I also have a lot of quick sew patterns. Uh, because that's something I, I actually learned to sew in it, basically, using quick sew patterns. So I was a huge fan of these. And well, I didn't do quite a bit of underwear for a while there as well. I highly recommend the old quick sew patterns. I do wish that they 
is still making such nice styles as I did. This one is a favorite. I don't I think I've done four or five tops using this pattern. I love it. And this is the biggest mess of them all. A box with my traced patterns. And how I keep order of them is that in the plastic envelope I draw a very ugly drawing of the pattern. I say like what it is and then if it's from Burda style I say it's the sizing and what issue. That's how I keep track of them. But uh, well yeah this is how. I think the drawings uh, that was a pretty good idea. I just wish I was a better drafting them. But anyways these needs to be sorted out as well and probably purged too. So that's what I'm going to do right now. All right, I've done a bit of a purge now, so I'm going to just move these patterns to a new prettier box that looks like this. Hmm? In order to make sense of it all, I will now label these boxes using my trusty old Dymo label maker. So this will create old school labels, which is a style I love. Now I have rested for a bit and I watched I'm keeping up with the Kardashian, I've meditated and just trying to be focused and calm and the reason for that is that I'm about to sew buttonholes on a blouse and well buttonholes can be a bit tricky sometimes so I want to be super focused and hopefully that is what I'm about right now. So well let's do that thing. Here's the blouse that I'm about to so buttonholes on and what I do before I start is that I measure out two important points. One is where my bust is, the, the apex of the bust, and then the other important point is the largest part of my tummy. And after I measure these two then I do some math and calculate an even distance between all these. So each needle here will be one buttonhole. Obviously when making buttonholes it's super important to first make samples and what I do is that I always use the fabric that I have for my real project and also it's interfaced with the same kind of fusible so I know that the result will be exactly the same. And I'm doing automatic buttonholes because I have that on my banana. Now I'll mark the buttonhole on the fabric and I will just try to sew this and see if the size is right. If not, then well, I'll do another sample. Now the machine is prepped to make a buttonhole. I have the automatic buttonhole presser foot here and the settings that I will use. And here is the thread. I mean, obviously you should use a thicker like embroidery thread for buttonholes, but I didn't have any matching colors, so I just use regular thread here. But I would say that I recommend a thicker thread normally. This is the first sample sewn together, so we'll hope, fingers crossed. Oh, here you go. Perfect at the first attempt. Well, now it's time to make those buttonholes. Now, I don't mark the entire buttonhole because that's absolutely unnecessary when I'm making automatic buttonholes. So instead, I use a sharp object and all. I just punch through a hole in the middle and repeat that for all the buttons and then I just start at that hole and sew the buttonhole. And this method is absolutely fantastic and makes sewing buttonholes so much quicker. Just to show you. Can you see those little punches? These are where I will place the needle when I begin sewing the buttonholes and since they are automatic everyone will have the exact same size, so there's no need to measure buttonholes when you're using the automatic function. Now I'm having a little bit of a conundrum because the buttonholes turned out very nicely and this is how I normally open up my buttonholes. But then I listened to the wonderful podcast Sewing Out Loud that I highly recommend. There is a link in the description section and also if you want I have a big list about sewing podcasts on my blog. Anyways, what they said in that podcast is that you shouldn't use a seam ripper. You need to use one of the specific buttonholes openers like a little knife. So I ordered one from Amazon now and I'm wondering should I 
wait until that arrives or just choose my old seam ripper way. I mean, it works out nicely, but, but I trust these podcasters so much that I think I shouldn't use the seam ripper anymore. <laughs> okay, who was I kidding, thinking that I could wait for a week <laughs> waiting to rip up my buttonhole? So no, I use my seam ripper. Sorry, everyone. Uh, I figured that if I have survived over 30 years using a seam ripper, I think I could do six more buttonholes. And despite, also I'm very anal about finishing one project before moving on to another one. But that said, I am actually making a second blouse in May and for that I will use the cutter and I'll report back on how that goes. Also I'm thinking Perhaps you want to see a complete tutorial on, on how I do buttonholes, my tips and hacks, because I think, especially if you have an automatic buttonhole function on your sewing machine, it doesn't have to be intimidating, even though in fact I actually meditated before, but uh, I don't think it's necessary to succeed with buttonholes. So, well, stay tuned for that. Well, that was all for me today. Thank you so much for tagging along. And if you want to see more videos from me, well, please hit subscribe and also check out my blog, thelostitch.com. And in, also in the description box, you will find links to stuff mentioned in this vlog. Well, I'll see you next time. Bye bye.